I can see a town off into the distance. I'm heading there at full speed. To the left and right is nothing but an endless snow desert. Up ahead, railroad tracks stretch far into the distance. Behind me, the railroad ties blur together, which is a sign that we must be going pretty fast. At this speed, I should be feeling the wind onto my skin, but I don't feel a thing on my body. It's only now that I realize I don't even have a body at all. Without a body, I exist as nothing more than a perspective. A perspective that's somehow chugging along the railroad like a train. Without a body, I don't get tired, so I just aimlessly watch the scenery flow by. Once I'm about a few kilometers away from the town, I finally recognize it. That's the town I live in. That's a bit of a relief. At least it's not some strange, unknown territory. Before long, the train self will arrive at the station. But as I gradually slow down, my body doesn't feel a thing. Not even momentum. Suddenly, my perspective switches, as if someone had turned the tuning dial on an old analog radio. My new perspective is facing the doors inside a train. I'm already at the station. The doors open automatically. There stands a girl. She pulls the corners of her mouth to her sides as if to say, bleh, before telling me, Welcome. Welcome. I've lived here for a long time, so I don't need anyone to welcome me. What's even going on? I try to tell her those things, but I can't speak at all. By the time I wake up, it's completely dark outside. Ghosts are nocturnal creatures, and thus the town's bustling with liveliness. No dreams again. The pain in my legs and the damage to my clothes have both vanished as if nothing had happened. I'm just a little relieved. I think I woke up much earlier than usual. I check outside the window again as part of my daily habit to see how much time is left before sunrise. We need to talk. I haven't seen that electric bulletin before. It looks pretty haphazardly made, too. There's wires poking out and duct tape stuck on here and there. It's probably handmade. It's been lazily stuck on the wall of a building facing my apartment. I've got a hunch as to who put it there. Almost everything in the world can be fixed with a little duct tape. I can still vividly remember her voice. But maybe that's because I actually heard her voice just yesterday. Ring. The phone starts to ring right on cue. I check to see if my socks are on and my boots and coat are there. I comb my hair with my fingers, but it'll probably just get messy again. It's not like I've got time to fix it properly, though. I'm off. I turn the doorknob and pull hard. What? When I open the door, I see a ghost standing in the common area of the apartment hallway. Is she a grown-up child? Or a childish adult? By appearances, she could go either way. But if you ask me, I know she's the former. I think she's beautiful. Yoo-hoo. Even as she starts talking, she doesn't stop filing her nails. She's number two on my list of people I'd rather not see right now. If it's not obvious, number one on the list is that red-headed girl, the ghost named Anya. Pacifica? Long time no see, Sayako. When I hear her somewhat friendly tone, it takes everything I have to keep my mind from unraveling. Pacifica's very smart. I get the feeling that all of this was part of those girls' plan to get to me. Those two know me. Probably have for far longer than I've known them. I need to go on a walk. I know I can't oppose her, but I know I can't just not oppose her either. Listen to what I have to say and go on as many walks as you'd like. I'm getting dizzy. Pacifica speaks softly, but has a firm fortitude. I don't think anyone can meaningfully oppose her in any way. The phone keeps ringing behind the door I just shut. It's kind of nauseating. But... I'm sure you'll find what I have to say quite interesting. It's not that I don't want to hear it, but why me? Please don't get the wrong idea. I just need help. Help? 
Pacifica takes a step forward, closing the distance between us. My body tenses up. I can't be sure if she's carrying a knife. I can't be sure she isn't carrying a knife. Not like she isn't allowed to. Whatever, I'll just put up with it from now. It's not like I'll die or anything. As I let my thoughts run wild, I suddenly smell something sweet. Something relaxing. A new ghost has arrived. Pacifica brings her face close up and whispers in my ear. It sends shivers down my spine, blowing away both the nausea and the sleepiness. A, a new ghost? Pacifica's breath tickles my earlobe. The tips of my toes tingle and my shoulders freeze in place. Oh yeah, I guess ghosts breathe too, huh? Shh, not so loud. It's still a secret. Don't whisper in my ear. Like I said, not so loud. Pacifica's only whispering in my ear for secrecy's sake, but my ears are so sensitive I can't focus on what she's saying. Okay, I'll listen. I'll hear you out at least. Really? Thank you. I thought you might say that. May I come into your room? Let's have a little private talk, woman to woman. Pacifica gently smiles from ear to ear like a flower blooming. I feel guilty thinking that there's nothing about me that deserves a smile like that. I've got an inferiority complex about how I'll never be able to smile like that. Those two thoughts gouge out my heart. Pardon the intrusion. Since I haven't even locked the door yet, Pacifica opens it on her own and starts to walk in, but then stops in place. Whoa. Pacifica? I mustn't forget my ninja manners. Ninja? Before she crosses the threshold into my room, Pacifica places her hands together and bows. What's up with that? I heard that this was a ninja custom. That's news to me. No way. Apparently, I'd become known as a ninja in this town without even knowing about it. That's kind of concerning in its own right, but for some reason, it feels oddly satisfying to see Pacifica blush. It's a pleasant sight, I guess. Upon entering the room, Pacifica makes a beeline for the phone and picks it up. She simply says, yes, it's me. Yes, that's right. Yes. Please wait. Goodbye. And then hangs up. I brought you something. Sorry, but could you boil some water? I place a pot on the stove and return to the table. Pacifica takes a bottle of instant coffee out of her handbag. She then takes out a tin of preserved biscuits. Ah. What's wrong, Sayako? I was thinking that this is what I had for my last meal, too. You mean, when Anya made a mess on the crotch of her plain Jane overalls? Probably, yeah. How long ago was that? No idea. Well, I, I haven't had much of an appetite. It's not like I'll die, anyway. My goodness. As I boil the water, I listen to Pacifica scold me, saying that I should take better care of myself, and that it's not a matter of living or dying. And soon enough, two cups of coffee are ready. She unseals the biscuit tin with a tug of the pull tab. Seems like a fairly decent meal to me. So, about that new ghost. I didn't realize the town could even get new ghosts. Of course it can, or at least it shouldn't. That's what makes it such a mystery. The town has always had a set number of ghosts, 1,024 to be exact. That number's never increased nor decreased. That number's never increased nor decreased. Nobody's ever said anything about it, but I had figured it was some sort of eternal rule. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like adding one more ghost won't make that much of a difference. Maybe someone decided 1,025 was a nicer number. She's a girl, around your age, Sayako. I see. For some reason, my heart skips a beat. A second later, my chest feels somewhat warm, somewhat numb. In one word, I feel fidgety. <laughs> so anyway, I thought we should throw her a welcome party. Pacifica just couldn't resist laughing. It looks as if she had read my mind. 
It's like she knows me better than I know myself, but does she know what this feeling is exactly? We have to throw her one, especially due to the circumstances. What circumstances? The church is examining her. She'll most likely be tired once they release her, so we have to show her a fun time to make up for it. The church. The town's biggest congregation of ghosts. It also serves as a peacekeeping organization. Headed by a priest, they do policing and politics, and thus the priest is more like the town mayor. Very few ghosts know what goes on in the church, but Pacifica is a pretty influential ghost as far as they go, so I guess she got that information from an inside source. The church still does things like that, huh? Some sort of immigration inspection, I suppose. But is that really necessary? It sounds like they're just doing it because they want to. I hate the church. Particularly their attitude. Even after the townspeople became town's ghosts and overcame death, the church still wants to control people under the guise of politics. It's almost like the ghosts are pretending to be alive and it's so forced. I feel like there's other things that bother me about them, but the anger makes my head feel hazy. Like, yeah, my head always feels hazy, but you know what I mean. So I can't even remember what it is that I'm angry about. <laughs> you still hate the church, I see. Well, I do too. Those guys are... poop. Whoa! Whoa! Church is poop! Poop is church! Ah, uh, the two of us laugh. Like two boys in uniform, merry-making while oozing with pure, unadulterated youth. Youth. That's not exactly a word I can relate to. So, Sayako, will you help me out? Okay, I'll help if I can. Thank you, I'm so happy I... When Pacifica hubs me tight, my body stiffens. There's nothing I can do. I figured I needed some sort of opportunity to do this, so I've been waiting for a long, long time. I'm so, so happy I could talk to you like this. Pacifica talks earnestly between sobs. That's right. Well, she may not act overly mature sometimes, that all it is, an act. Everyone who's close to her knows this. Huh. I remember more than I thought. I feel happy that I remember, but it also feels odd that she's got some attachment to me. It's a swirl of emotions, like a spinning barber shop pole. Pacifica's as gentle as ever. She hasn't changed. But what about me? I feel like I've changed. A little. The same way milk changes after its expiration date. A change you can smell with a single whiff. I can't go back to being me. I suppose that's how I'd describe the way I feel. I guess I was just looking for an excuse. You've always been so close. I just needed a little courage to speak out to you. Ow. Ow. There's nothing I can say. Being touched makes me feel safe. I don't want to let you go ever again. But at the same time, it also makes me anxious. After all, I have no idea how I could ever repay someone who makes me feel this happy. If I get too comfortable taking advantage of her kindness, she might start to hate me. And I don't want her to hate me. I can't find the words to say. With just a simple hug, all of these feelings are revolving around inside me, and I'm just so afraid that I'll end up crushing this moment into dust. And just like that, the happiness has faded away completely, leaving nothing but a coarse anxiety coursing through my heart. Am I just not used to dealing with kindness? Eh? Pacifica suddenly lets go, and for a second I fear that my worst fear has come true, but the reality is slightly different. Sorry, Sayako, but, um... What is it? Are you showering properly? You kind of smell like spoiled milk. Oh, now that you mention I haven't showered since the other day. Which other day? You know, when Anya spilled coffee on those ugly ogre overall of hers. The poop talked! Pacifica leaps backwards, away from me. There's a look of fear on her face that she probably wouldn't want anyone else to see normally. Well, I mean, if nobody's gonna come see me and the air's not humid, then why bother showering? But what happened to- Oh, I don't want to let you go ever again. Who asked you, you hundred-year-old poop? 
It's been a hundred years? The very concept of a calendar has disappeared from this town, so time has become incredibly, uh, ambiguous. Individually, a day is simple to track, but as the days pile up, it's impossible to keep track of months and years. You have an easier time counting the sand in the desert of snow surrounding this town, one grain at a time. If you think about it, I suppose it's not normal to go this long without showering, huh? Maybe I really have changed. Am I trying to reclaim myself? Take a shower. Now! Oh, okay. My fear of being separated from Pacifica turns into fear of Pacifica herself. I stop thinking, grab a towel, and head to the bathroom as quickly as possible. Wow. Anime interludes. It's almost dawn. I don't think I've ever gone outside around that time before. The snow seems a little soft and hard to walk on, perhaps due to the rising temperature. Ah, Sayako. Pacifica. Looks like I wasn't the only one called here. I see. I guess that makes sense. The time has come. Is it done? I wonder. I can't wait. Pacifica nods and waves her words for a while, and then... If you can't wait, then let's hurry. Ah, hey. I chase after Pacifica when she breaks into a run. It's my first outing at dawn. We dash, so swimming through the pristine air. Main Street looks so different compared to how it normally does. It's like a quiet, still pond. And just as how skipping stone ripples in a still pond, our, our footsteps and Pacifica's laughter break the silence. I'm excited. Uh, not that I mind, but why are you out of breath? <sighs> we take one turn off of Main Street and reach a workshop garage. Anya looks up at us as she sits on a garbage can placed in front of the closed shutters, swinging her legs around. Oh, hi, yo. Oh, guten Morgen. Huh? Ah, <laughs> the two of us laugh when we see Anya's confused face. Anya looks to be about my age, so I don't use formal words with her. Pacifica seems to be older than me, so I've ended up using formal words with her, not because I'm trying to keep my distance from her or anything, and it's not like I don't respect Anya, either. Do those greetings mean anything? Not really, Poop. You starting something? Well, this is how things usually go. Though something special is waiting just around the corner, that doesn't mean things will suddenly change between us. Well, whatever. I'm tired, so let's get down to business. Anya sighs. Her face does look a little tired, and her posture doesn't show any enthusiasm at all, either. So, is it done? Uh, is it done, or is it not? What do you think? The way her eyes light up with confidence really spoils the answer to that question. It's done. It's done. I did it. I did it. Wanna see? You wanna see it? I wanna see it. I grab Anya by the shoulder when I say that. We have both lost our cool. Anya chuckles to herself and pulls the remote out of her pocket. Time for the big reveal. Clack, clack, clack. Wee, wee. The shutters open, revealing a large, box-shaped silhouette inside the dark garage. Ta-da! There it is, our hope. Our first weapon. This one's for the books. A squarish armored vehicle. At least that's what it probably is. Wow, that's amazing, Anya. Indeed, I'm impressed. We walk inside the large, spacious garage, storing the armored vehicle and pad its frame. I'm not a car person, but I can tell that it is a reliable machine. That armor looks like it could deflect a few bullets, and the big fat tires look like they could handle any terrain. I doubt you could get anywhere in the snow desert surrounding the city without something like this. <laughs> well, it's an honor to hear that. Thanks. Anya's an apprentice at the local town repair workshop, though I feel like this is the first time her career skills have proven useful to us since we first got to know each other. 
I didn't think a repair worker like Anya could create something so impressive. It's amazing, that's all I can say. You think we can leave with this thing? I mutter as Anya shows us inside the car. We sure can. It certainly seems so. Our goal, or rather, our dream, I suppose, is to leave this city. Or to be more accurate, it's to head to my home country, which may or may not be on the other side. My friends and I have been working day in and day out towards that goal. No idea how far we'll have to go, but I sure made... No idea how far we'll have to go, but I made sure we can pack a lot of food and stuff. Should we bring, like, board games and stuff, too? Wouldn't, be too, wouldn't it be too bumpy of a ride for board games? Oh, good point. <laughs> Boy, am I tired. Time to sleep. Anya lies down on the hard concrete garage floor. I look outside the window. Sure enough, the sun's almost fully risen. Ghosts always get sleepy in the morning. They can barely stay awake up until early morning, but even that's cutting it close. Ah, no fair. Me too. Pacifica lies down next to the already half-asleep Anya and curls up. They look so comfortable, it makes me want to lie down next to them too, but there's something I have to do before that. I get the garage shutter remote. And I also pick up a thick blanket that Anya must have gotten ready for this little sleepover. Hey, come on. It's gonna be cold if you just go to sleep like that. It's not like ghosts can catch colds, but they do feel cold, and even though they're wearing coats, the floor is likely to grow cold. I press the button on the remote, and the shutter shuts with a rattle. I, li I lie down on the concrete floor and loosely spread out the blanket. Say, Anya? What? Did your boss help you? Not really? It doesn't matter either way, but... Huh? Uh... Are you pretending to be asleep? Uh... Well, whatever. We share our warmth underneath the blanket as we drift off into sleep. Eventually, our consciousnesses melt as we all enter one dream. If only. A dream like that's more than, like, a pipe dream. Drip. And with that last thought, I sink deep down into the ocean of sleep. My vision blurs as if crossing the surface of the water. My eyelids are heavy. So heavy they start to sink. They start to sink by themselves. But right before they close, in the, sil in the sliver of my dim vision... Conglomerationality! Who's that? 